Who are you? Our most frequent question. Who are you? Child of God. What a beautiful hang. How often do we need to tell ourselves that? How often? Every day? Every day at 2.30 when we're done with this? At 2.30? That's one of the main reasons we're doing this. Because we get confused. Because uh, we can know that and then we can forget it. And we get stirred up and worried and we're not. We're forgetting the, the child of God. And we have these positions. We come to Him in humility. Uh, and like the tax collector saying, I've got nothing here. I bring nothing. And uh, you're God. I'm not. That's very helpful <laughs> for our relationship with God. He picks us up like the prodigal son and says, no, you're worthy. I made you worthy. Come back. I love you. I've been waiting on you. And he restores you and puts a ring on your finger and a robe on you and moves you into his service. And then we can, and then we know we're full, not from duty, not from earning it. We know we're full, we can carry a cross. Romans 8, uh, 16 and 17, after just saying, ah, you know you're a child of God. If you cry out, Abba, Father, God, help me. That's a sign that you know you're God's. <laughs> you know, God help, means you believe. And then he says, then you're going to be glorified with him, provided you suffer with him. And so you're going to suffer with Him. It's a life of suffering. You're carrying a cross. In a relationship, it's difficult. You're carrying a cross. In a job that's hard and not making out, you're, you're carrying a cross, especially when you're a witness to Him at that same time. And then the hope that we're going to be like Him. We're going to be just like Him. We just don't want to forget these positions. Come to Him in humility, picked up by Him, uh, carried by Him, to the point that I can carry my own cross and suffer along with him and knowing I'm going to be like him. Just positions, uh, just, uh, just a reminder. And so Jesus said it this way on the Mount of Beatitude, beautiful place overlooking the Sea of Galilee as he did the famous uh, Sermon on the Mount. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Right, right after they said you don't put a, a lamp under the under a basket, you put a lamp on a table for all to see. Our city's on a bluff, but more importantly, your life, you're the light of the world. That's what God is telling us. He says this in John 1 to 3. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that was made. In him, in him was life, and that life in us is the light of man. I mean, we're the light of the world. He's in you. He's a, you are light. So now let's talk about this light on the city of the hill. Uh, we've been given this double meaning, this verse, uh, this week, all week. Uh, what do you love about Memphis? Okay, this is Jeremiah's prophecy. Uh, Israel had not been faithful and was taken over uh, by Babylon, conquered them, and, and we're gonna, facing a 70-year exile. And they really were trying to say, God, well, you know, we'll just pray and you'll get us back or Sure, you knew us sooner, but God was saying, you're going to be there a while. And here's a letter, and here's what I want you to do. And somebody read this out loud for us. From Genesis 26, we see it again, over and over again. Be fruitful and multiply. We also see these normal things. You're in exile. You're in a foreign country. You're basically slaves taken over and saying, no, build houses there. Settle down. Plant gardens. Eat. You're going to be here a while. Do the best for this city. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. So be part of the community. Deep, deep, deep. And exile, does that apply to us or is that just for them? It applies to us to sure. Yeah. Because now, that final position that we show, we're His. We're going to be like Him in heaven. Heaven is our home. That's what we were talking about last week. What's it going to be like there? That's our guide to do, know what to do now. But Peter writes to God's elect exiles uh, in the young church. And then he's what he says in 2 to 11 to 12. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from your sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day He visits us. He's coming back. He's going to visit us. They will see that. You're in exile. You're not from here. That's helpful too. I think that this definitely helps to our political stress. And we're, not, we're not from here. When you go to a foreign country, you see some things they could do better, but you don't get all worked up about it. 
because you know this in your permanent place. So even though, in a sense, a lot of us are drawn back to here because we're from here and we like, we like to be around our people, that's kind of our testimony, three or four of us already. All right, let's check this out. Seek the peace of this peace and the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because as if it prospers, you too will prosper. So all those words, we like all those words like build, plant, eat, marry, relationship, get your sons and daughters uh, in marriage. All those things are good, but to seek the pe peace and the prosperity of the city to which you carried into exile. So you're not here long. This is theologically true, not just for these slaves who are in captivity, but it's also true for us, as, as, as Peter and Paul and, and all the apostles pointed out, as Christ pointed out, this is not your home, so don't worry about some of these things. But pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you will prosper. So we're called to pray for our city. It's a, it's a command. And that command really does translate all the way through the Bible, all the way through the New Testament to do that. So just like last week, how might this inform what you think about our relationship to Memphis in your family, work, social, church? Where, how, how does it impact it? And don't think about all four. Think about one. Like, what's God doing? I know and I, I was always kind of stressed out about Wonderman and that we didn't do a ton of business here and we're not impacting the city. And we found, you know, finally at the end, we got a few clients before I left in Memphis, but our real clients were around the world. But I, what we could do was hire people. What we could do is offer an, an average great job of, you know, 70 plus was pretty good. Better than the average income, all for, for young people too. So all that was good. Um, so that, that, that came a piece with that. But that's what seeking the peace of the city, be a place to hire. Whether you, and if you can't hire here, you develop people. We had a, an insurance person in here earlier this morning to be nameless, but he's encouraging people as he meets with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and he can seek the peace of the city that way. Uh, those of you who uh, don't develop people or build businesses, you still, each relationship, you're making a big difference. So get something in your mind about where you might seek the peace of the city. Um, this one's just huge. It's been a theme for three weeks, and you guys are already talking about it. This is, um, let me make sure I can read this well. Humans, so forever, the three basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, right? It's kind of the... Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and those are the top or the bottom, wherever they are, that they're the most important, the most fundamental, the most basic. In polling, the head of the Gallup organization started to see this, that people took all that into one thing in the, in the, in the last 30 years. Humans used to desire love, money, food, shelter, safety, peace, and freedom more than anything else. That's what they wanted. The last 30 years have changed this. Now people want to have a good job, and they want their children to have a good job. This changes everything for world leaders, everything they do. From raging war to building societies, we need to be, need, we need to be carried out within the new context of they need, a new, they need a good job. People need a good job. That's as much as seeking the prosperity of the city. That is a, maybe Jeremiah was a barter trade, so you plant, and make, but right after plant, make sure you eat. <laughs> Here's, people need a good job. So that's what brings the prosperity of our city. So here's what God say, continues to say in Jeremiah. And there were prophets in the middle of this, that the verses I took out right before these. It's like the prophets were saying, some false prophets were saying, don't worry about it. God's got it. You just, you just focus on being religious. And, and, and here God is saying through Jeremiah, no, you focus on the peace of the city. You focus on loving the city and, and, and the prosperity of the city because you're part of it. That's amazing. That's an amazing thing. And some of them were saying just the opposite. Well, let's, let's fight against them. We'll hate these people. They've got us in captivity, but still bless them. Bless the people who have you in captivity, which is what the early Christians did to the Romans. Wait a minute. These people love our people more than we do. For here, here's what, here's what God says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. To give you a hope and a future. He wants you. Scott, everything you're saying, they need hope. God gives us that. Plans to give you hope. He has a plan of hope for you. That you will, and here's, here's the command, that you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. 
when you seek God with all of your heart, then you'll know He's got plans for you. This is the, it kind of works in the reverse order of the way the verses are listed. He's backing up. But seek Him. He's valuable. <laughs> He's worthy. He's beautiful. Then know that I have plans to prosper you. Looking at these verses in verse, know that I have plans to prosper you and that you're going to be fine. You're going to have hope. Then do that for the city. So seek me. Know you're going to be fine in heaven forever. <laughs> then seek the city where you are. 